Well, uh, this short video presentation will deal with the normal anatomy and a general view of the base of the skull anatomy. Specific bones, uh, the part of the bones that are present at the base of the skull, uh, specific foramen that is present, the pterygopalatine fossa, and uh, the uh, most common sites from where the CSF uh, tend to leak in case of fractures. Now, uh, as a maxillofacial surgeon, why we need to study the base of the skull anatomy? There are two reasons. First, in case of trauma, uh, a maxillofacial trauma usually never kills a patient until or unless there is a life-threatening bleed or any hematoma or bleed that obstruct the airway. Now, uh, there may be, uh, it is usually uh, the associated head injury that kills the patient. Now, uh, in case of uh, maxillofacial injuries uh, associated with head injuries, there may be fractures of the petrous part of the temporal bone, the vertical part in the occipital region, or a, uh, the frontal bone fractures, or the uh, uh, the uh, fractures at the base of the skull that may lead to uh, certain conditions like anemocephalus. Now, uh, identification of all those fracture lines and uh, identification of the anatomy of the normal anatomy of the base of skull is uh, mandatory for uh, a maxillofacial resident. Secondly, there are certain tumors that tend to invade the base of the skull, especially uh, those arising from the nasopharyngeal region. And secondly, there are certain tumors that tend to push uh, the floor of the orbit, uh, sorry, the floor of the, uh, the anterior cranial fossa upwards or may cause pressure resorption over there. And uh, third, uh, there are certain fungal infections that invade through the sinuses, into the ethmoidal sinuses, frontal sinuses, and eventually into the, uh, the anterior cranial fossa. So uh, let's look at the, uh, let's start with it and uh, have a quick quick review on the, the major landmarks that are present in the, the base of skull. Alright, let's start with the base of skull CT interpretation. Uh, <coughs> here is an uh, axial view of the base of skull and uh, uh, this is an HRCT with a heart tissue window. Uh, if uh, you are in this country, you are lucky to have one. Now, uh, the base of skull, let's start with it. Uh, the mid, in the midline, the anterior portion you see here is the um, crystal galli. These are the uh, frontal sinuses. Okay, uh, this is the frontal bone, and uh, here are the orbits. Uh, this is the medial cranial fossa on both sides. Here is the sphenoidal sinus with a, a single septa between them. Uh, there are the, uh, the mastoid air cells. Here you can see this is the external auditory canal. Uh, this small structure which you see, uh, this uh, small black shadow, a uh, hyper dense, uh, sorry, a hypo dense area. Uh, this is the cochlea, and this is the inner ear. Uh, in the middle, is, it is the uh, middle cranial fossa. This is the occipital bone, and all of this part is basically the petrous part of the temporal bone. The outer pro projection here, what you see, is the the external pin of the ear. Now, uh, this is basically the vertical part of uh, the temporal bone. Coming on to the next slide, uh, again, at the level of the orbit, the base of the orbit, uh, again, sphenoid processes. These are basically the uh, ethmoidal processes now, which project inwards. Um, in the midline, there is again the crystal galli from the olfactory fibers pass through. Uh, this is again the middle cranial fossa, and this is the part of the temporal bone. And uh, here, what you see, is again the cochlea. This is the external ear, the mastoid ear cells, and uh, this is the uh, middle cranial fossa. <clears throat> now, here are some important structures that lie. Uh, these again are the ethmoidal sinuses. Uh, this is the spinoral sinus connected with them. Uh, this is the middle cranial fossa. Uh, this is where the clivus start, and uh, it runs posteriorly up to the foramen magnum. Uh, here, what you see is uh, basically the the carotid groove which you see this is the carotid groove on both sides of the spinoidal sinus on the posterior lateral aspect of the sinuses it is the carotid groove and this is the carotid canal which you see 
Now, uh, <clears throat> in identifying these structures, it's important to uh, first thing which you need to know is that at what level you are looking at because at certain levels these structures won't remain and will be replaced by other like formant, lessum, etc. will be shown in the next slides. Now, uh, I'm going on to the next slide. This is again <coughs> the formant lessum I uh, told or you told that it should be differentiated from the carotid. Now, this is basically the carotid canals. These are the carotid canals and uh, this is the spinoidal sinuses this is the inner ear this is the, uh, the uh, mastoid air cells and here with the, with the, the uh, middle green fossa will project into the formal magnum and uh, this this vertical part which you see uh, this, sorry these oblique parts which you see on the both anterior sides this is basically the spinozygomatic suture this is the zygomatic bone this is the projection of the zygomatic bone and this is where the spinoid starts Base of skull uh, is basically the sphenoid bone. Uh, majorly, um, the posterior part is made by the greater window sphenoid and the anterior part um, by the, um, the the lesser wings. Uh, here, what you see in the mid is the crista galli and from where the olfactory fiber parts on both of the sides. These are the ethmoidal sinuses and on behind is the sphenoidal sinus with a single septum. Now, <coughs> the next very important slide now this carotid canal that will be replaced by the formal lesserum the long one which you see this long shadow this is of the formal lesserum this is the anterior part of the formal lesserum and here it is the posterior part of the formal lesserum here with the uh, another uh, uh, hypodense area which you see this is the formal ovale this big one is the ovale and this small one is the formal spinosum so for uh, for learning purpose a mnemonic uh, L for long, L for lesterum, O for ovale, this big one O is the ovale and this S for small and S for spinosum. So this is how you can remember it. Formal rotundum is basically seen in the coronal views uh, more precisely. Uh, these uh, uh, small, uh, not actually small, these, uh, uh, this bony uh, this, this bone which you see here is basically the condyle of the mandibles. This is at the level of the glenoid fossa. These are the condyles bilaterally, and this is the temporal bone. This is again the spinozygomatic suture, and this is the clivus, which is very, uh, very uh, uh, beautifully seen in this slide, this section. And these are again the bilateral uh, these mastoid hair cells. Again, uh, starting from the anterior most part, uh, this is the nasal bone, this is the nasal septum which you see now, now the crystal glass has been placed by the, um, the, uh, the nasal septum in this slide and um, on the lateral aspects of it, these are the small ethmoidal sinuses. Uh, this is the spinoidal sinuses. Um, this is again the temporal bone, the petrous part of the temporal bone. This is the clivus and uh, these are the condyles which you see. These are the condyles. And this is the mastoid. This is the formal magnum. This is clivus. Now, <clears throat> another important thing in this slide, very important one. Uh, this structure, which you, uh, this hypotenuse area extending outward from the formal magnum, this is basically the hypoglossal canal. All right. This is the hypoglossal canal, which you see here. So, uh, and uh, this is again the formal lesserum, and this is the formal ovale, and this is the formal spinosum, which you see. Now, uh, next slide. Again, uh, between the sphenoid and the maxillary antrum is the tarigo palatine fossa, which you will see. Now, here are the maxillary sinuses, okay? These are the maxillary sinuses, and uh, be behind them is the uh, the, the tarigo palatine fossa which will start from the pterygoid pairs and up to it will run up to the apex of the orbit and uh, these are the spinoidal sinuses and these are the ethmoidal sinuses this is the nasal septum and this is nasal bone uh, these are the maxillary antrums and here what you see the space between them it is the 
tetragopalatine fossa. The contents of it include the tetragopalatine ganglion, uh, the descending palatine artery, maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve, and the nerve of the pterygoid canals. Now, the last slide here we have uh, again the not much of a pretty slide. Uh, this is what you see is the inner ear. Um, here is the the part of the you can see um, the clivus starting, and this is the orbits. These are the anterior. Uh, this is the middle cranial fossa, and this is the posterior cranial fossa. This is occipital bone and most rare cells. All right. <coughs> now, now elaborating these things. Here you can see uh, the anterior part is made with the lesser wing of the sphenoid, and uh, the greater wing of sphenoid forms the uh, the middle cranial fossa, and uh, the posterior part that is, is basically made by the occipital bone from behind, and as well as the sphenoid bone. Now, the sphenoid bone is like a butterfly uh, butterfly shaped bone, uh, which uh, basically it it makes the the base of the skull. Now uh, here in this section, you can appreciate several structures here. Uh, this, these are the uh, starting from the first left one. Uh, this is the pterygopalatine fossa. You can see behind the uh, maxillary antrum here is where at the level where the pterygoid plates would uh, start. Uh, this is the clivus. These are the condyles bilateral. This is the mastoid. This is the, um, the posterior clean fossa. Uh, <coughs> again, the next slide, uh, the widening canal. Uh, this is not much importance for us uh, as maxillofacial surgeons. Uh, the neurosurgeon would probably with it. Here again, uh, pterygopalatine fossa. Um, another section taken quite. Uh, in, as an inferior slide and very near to the base of skull. Uh, this is the internal auditory canal which you see on the on the left side. Here is the internal auditory canal and uh, here is the foramen rotundum. Uh, this can be best seen in the coronal views basically. And uh, here again we can see appreciate in these slides uh, this is the foramen spinosum, small one. This is the big one, foramen ovale. And uh, here, what you see, the elongated one is the foramen lacerum. The last one, uh, in the last slide, uh, you can see the optic canal running through. And this is uh, taken at the level of the superior orbital fissure. And these are the interior clenoid processes. All right. Uh, Again, uh, uh, a magnified image of uh, these, a um, uh, basically coral view showing uh, the orbital plate of the frontal bone. Here it is, and this this uh, thin paper thin plate is called the lamina papyracea, and uh, this is the cribriform plate, and these are the turbinates, and these sciences are the ethmoid layer sciences. Uh, here you can see the optic canal, the superior orbital fissure, uh, not very appreciated here. Uh, here you see the foramen rotundum coming through at the uh, level, uh, very located very posteriorly, where the um, uh, where the where, where, you, where you would see the sphenoidal pro uh, processes as well as the sorry the sphenoidal sinuses as well as the uh, the uh, the area where the pharynx uh, would start, the nasal pharynx would start. Uh, here, down which you, uh, where you see it are the pterygoid plates. This is the lateral pterygoid plate. This is the medial one. Coming on to the next slide, again superior orbital fissure. Um, this slide is repeated. Um, superior orbital fissure. This is the optic canal, and this is the anterior clenoid process. Here again, you can identify the structure. Uh, the pterygo palatine fossa here by the now this is uh, what you see is basically the shadow of the cavernous sinuses all right here are the cavernous sinuses 
and uh, <coughs> you see the bilateral opacification these are the bilateral opacification of the lateral aspect of the cella uh, this depicts a cavernous sinus pathology a cavernous sinus is usually not visible on a CT scan now uh, if it is visible there is obviously uh, or it is always uh, a pathology uh, probably uh, cavernous sinus thrombosis uh, we'll see in the next slide as well here you see is a shadow of the uh, on the lateral aspects of the cella this is the cavernous sinus uh, in the next slide here what you see is the sorry here what you see is a pathology that is arising uh, as a, um, that is invading the base of skull and uh, the le on the left side it is involving the the sphenoidal sinuses with irregular ragged borders now uh, coming to the anatomy of the pituitary part of the temporal bone uh, uh, this contains several important structures uh, the most important one is that the facial uh, the facial nerve is going through it and secondly the inner ear is present the oh, actually all of the ear is present inside the pituitary part of temporal bone here uh, uh, to visualize this you require an hrct and secondly you would uh, require a 1 mm or 0.5 mm at least a 1 mm slide to visualize all of these structures so this is the ear ossicle here is the cochlea here in this this slide you can see the, the semicircular canals in uh, this slide the third one the lower left one here what you see is the shadow of the internal carotid artery <coughs> this is the inner ear and these are the mastoidal cells uh, and this these are the uh, um, this shadow of air here you see the external artery canal this is the condyles this is an axial view uh, both of these are axial view the first one is the core node Again, <coughs> another HRCT, a high resolution CT. This is the external artery canal, and this is the internal artery canal. This is a coronal view showing both internal and external artery canals. Here, what you see is basically a fracture at the pituitary part of the temporal point transposing through the inner ear. And uh, Secondly, uh, this may result, so this should be identified in every trauma patient, this may result in the facial nerve weaknesses. Now, uh, <coughs> this may result in the CS of autoria. So if the patient is complaining of any fluid coming through the ear, uh, this fracture and this these slides should be reviewed again and again to identify the fracture lines now this is again a uh, fracture at the level of the pituitary part of the temporal bone you can compare both of the uh, uh, the slides here there is no fracture here a uh, well differentiated line is appreciated now this is another example of uh, the CSF leaks at the ethmoidal ears uh, at model region uh, this would result in uh, this would result in the CSF rhinorrhea. A patient would complain of a salty, uh, salty fluid coming through, uh, or salty nasal dripping as well. This is again another uh, another example of the CSF leakages. And this is at the level of the sphenoidal sinuses here you can see the ethmoidal sinuses this is back on the posterior aspect here the sphenoidal sinuses and here it is the left sphenoidal sinuses filled and here you can appreciate a small ditch or a small incontinuency at the posterior aspect of the sinus so this is the site of the csfd 
Now this was all about the uh, anatomy, a general review on the anatomy of the base of the skull, uh, the uh, specific parts of the bones that are present, the base of skull, specific landmarks, the tetracoparitine fossa, the uh, specific foramina that are present at the base of skull, and the common sites where the cerebrospinal fluid may leak. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, please uh, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.